Hi, my name is Kimberly, and I travel around in my van seeking adventure and sometimes digging up a mystery. I grew up in rural Iowa where I like to ride horses and play in the neighbor's hay barn with my friends. Little did I know that a drama would unfold right before my eyes at the very young age of 11 years old. So sit back and listen and see if you can make some connections to the mystery of the unsolved murder of Chicken George. this or not but over there is where actually right there is the remains of the barn where my friends and I were playing that day we were playing inside and the hay was stacked up in the barn and we kind of made like our own little houses there and we were playing house inside the barn the machine shed was over this way closer to the road and the corn bin was beyond that barn. But on that barn, and I know that this is kind of macabre, <laughs> but um, anyway, if you can see right now, there's actually two vultures on this barn that we were playing in. Just like, hmm, isn't that kind of dark? in what used to be George Keller's driveway. Right there is the cemetery, and there's the arch sign to the cemetery. Now, right here was George's garage, and right here in this foreground was the charred remains of his home that he shared with his mother until she died. So, George's house burnt down two years previously and the authorities determined that it was arson. The house was set on fire intentionally. Okay, so back to the barn. Behind the barn was the Harrison Cemetery. And one day while my friends and I were playing inside the barn, there was a vehicle that drove by the barn to go back to the cemetery. And soon after that vehicle arrived back there, we heard loud arguing from a group of men. There were two men that had gotten out of the car and there was another man there. And that man was Chicken George. Did the men at the cemetery have some responsibility in burning George's house? Now, People will tell you that he had an apartment in his garage and I'm going to tell you that it was not awesome. I'm just going to be honest with you. Chickens were living in it. They were roosting on top of his piano. There was chicken poop throughout the house and it was clear um, to investigators that George actually cohabitated with chickens, lots of chickens, in his garage. So that's why partially or maybe all of why George earned the name, the nickname Chicken George and why this mystery became like who killed Chicken George. There was a barn full of hay 
there was a machine shed and a corn crib at the place where a house used to be uh, to the west of here. And by through that property where the house used to be, there was a, a path that led to this cemetery called the Hem Harrison Cemetery. And there wasn't a whole lot of traffic coming out to this cemetery. It's actually very old, as you can see. Most of the stones are, are ancient. Um, they're, I think it was the early 1800s um, that it started. So this, this cemetery didn't have a whole lot of foot traffic or even car traffic um, back in that time. And what was really strange was that a car came down through here while me and two of my neighborhood friends were playing in the barn. Now, they had no idea that we were playing in the barn, but when a car came by that was clearly a city car, it was a dark colored sedan, probably navy blue or black, and we were, of course, we were up there playing anyway. And so we decided to pretend that we were spying on them and they were up to no good. Actually, that probably wasn't pretend because these guys met George Keller here at the cemetery and they had a very loud, very angry conversation between the two men in the car who were dressed in business attire and George Keller. So why was George here? Who did he meet? What were they doing? And did they have something to do with his murder? That's a good question. Okay, so well, I've checked every headstone and there wasn't a single Kent, a single Keller, or a single Snyder. So those are all the family names that were related to George Keller. So it makes me kind of wonder, what was he doing hanging out here? What was he doing meeting with men from the city? What were they up to? What were they arguing about? My friends and I witnessed this argument in the steamy summer of 1978. On September 28, 1981, George did not show up for his evening shift at the local truck stop. His boss, Bob Wetzler, along with his sister, Lucy Kent, and her husband, went at 1 a.m. on September 29, 1981, to George's house. There, they found George was murdered, lying in a pool of blood. Mr. Wetzler would later tell reporters that George's hand was shaped in a claw shape, as if lunging in struggle. So, what happened to Chicken George? Let's go back. Let's think about the arson that had occurred a couple years before this argument. It remains unsolved to this day. Was the arson related? Was that the first warning that the men in suits gave to Chicken George? What were the men in suits up to? What business did they have with George? What was Chicken George up to? The family still seeks closure today for the unsolved murder of Chicken George. They ask anyone who has information to contact iowacoldcases.org. They just want closure for the loss of their loved one.